Right then, better get on with editing my New Year's special. Just got an email. It says, private video just for you from Scotty Storm. Okay. Whoa! Why? Why has he sent me this? Um, this is getting uncomfortable. Conspiracy cats? Oh, thank God it's not for me. I'll just give cats a call. Hey, cats, fight. Hey, bud. Um, how you doing? Huh, <laughs> not bad, mate. Thanks. Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. What about yourself? Brilliant, bud. Yeah, listen, I've just got this uh, email from Scotty Storm. But I, um, I think it was meant for you. I'm just going to forward it to you. Hold on. I'll just check. Hold on. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got it. Brilliant. Um, I've got to go, mate. I'm busy editing. I'll speak to you later. All right, mate. Thanks. See you later. Bye. I'll just check this video. What the fuck? Hey, guys, I'm Craig. Welcome back to Fight the Flat Earth, the channel whose New Year's resolution is to eradicate stupidity. It seems I have been picking up a few fans. One in particular is YouTube's Mr. Cheswick. In the last week, he made like four videos about me. I managed to get hold of some first-hand footage of him actually editing one of the videos. Should we have a look? Oh yeah, oh Quaig. Wait, Quaig's not quite white. Mm. Hold on, I'll add something. Oh, there she is, my Quaig. Oh, I love you, my Quaig. <gasps> oh, Quake. I, um, kind of wish I hadn't watched that. Anyway, Happy New Year's Eve. Let's go and laugh at an idiot. And boy, do we have an idiot to finish off 2018 with. Ross. Flat Earth, fucking Jesus. Thatcher. Please have facial protection ready, as the military organisation that pays all the anti-flat Earth YouTube channels will take no responsibility for damage to your head caused from face palming. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. <laughs> Right guys, before we get started, in episode 4 of Flurfs at Idiots, fuck wit word, card's just there, I asked people to vote on who did a better drawing of the sun, my daughter, or fuck wit word. So, we're going to tally up the results now, we'll get my daughter's results first. Not bad. And now everyone that voted for fuck wit word. Any, any second now. Confirmed. A five-year-old girl can draw the sun better than fuck wit word. Right, on to the main attraction. And just so you guys know, there is a special guest coming up to help me with this one. Yes, Flat Earth Jesus. A name that this particular flirt came up with because he thinks that he looks like Jesus. Now, I wanted to address this particular claim first. Right, so here we have a picture of a white male, lightish kind of brown hair. Um, his, his eyes, I'm not really sure they could be dark blue or dark green. Now, I'm not sure the stupid twunt realizes this, but if indeed Jesus was real, then he was apparently born in Bethlehem a couple of thousand years ago. And Bethlehem's in the Middle East. I'm just saying that if a little white baby was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, then that would have been a fucking miracle. I can assure you, Grandfather Dumbass, you look nothing like Jesus. So, I first met Grandfather Dumbass on the Non Sequitur Show Flatterday Night Fight. If you guys haven't subscribed to the Non Sequitur Show, then you really, really should. They are literally the best debate channel on YouTube and they cover a massive range of topics every day with debates and talks about a bunch of great stuff. I would highly recommend that if you haven't, you subscribe to the Non Sequitur Show. Every Saturday they have debates about the Flat Earth. On this particular Saturday, we had Team Skeptic against some guy who apparently lived in a storage unit because Flat Earth had caused him to lose his family, loved ones and home. And afterwards we had me against Grandfather Dumbass. I'd spent time during the week writing a badass opening that went, you know what? Just watch it. FTFE, you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hey, I'm Craig from Fight the Flat Earth, um, the channel that has chained up stupidity in the basement and is force-feeding it knowledge. 
first off, I want to say thank you to Kyle and Steve for having me back on. But I do have to ask, what the fucking hell? Do you hate me or something? First, you have me debate against the mind of God and now flat earth Jesus. So, so yeah, thanks for that. Anyway, today I'm here welcome. to tell you guys that I do not expect to win a debate because there is no debate to be had. The shape of the earth has been conclusively proven since Aristophanes. We know there is a curve because it's the only way the math makes sense, as um, Team Skeptic just proved. And for visual proof, you only have to look at anything produced by Soundly with his late Pontchartrain photos or Miles Davis's the YouTube channel with his observations from Terminal in Scotland, both showing things that are 100% impossible on a flat earth done by ordinary people in a way that can be replicated by any of you. We know that gravity is a thing. It's been proven countless times and explains literally everything we see in the universe, including how our star, planet, and even <laughs> you were created. Uh, for, <laughs> for proof, you simply have to understand how the Cavendish experiment works uh, that proves that mass attracts mass. I can show you proof of things like the Coriolis <laughs> effect, the Epsilon effect, and more. I can explain to you how Bob and Jism from Globebusters, F.E. Core bullshit, themselves prove that the Earth has curved and does indeed spin. I can do all this and more, but it's not going to matter because you're just going to misunderstand or outright reject what I'm telling you. So no, I'm not here to win a debate because no matter what, you're struck back to your crazy life, high-five your friends at the asylum and pretend you've run one anyway. So what I'm here to do tonight is to show everyone how fucking stupid the whole idea of a flat Earth and the people that subscribe to it are. I will answer your little questions and ridicule you for the stupid responses that you give. And I will let everyone watch and see how truly dense you are. And I'm going to enjoy doing it. So come on, Flat of Jesus, bring on your best. Because tonight, we're going to see a second round of crucifixions. I thought that was pretty good. I'd spent time doing that. And should we have a look at Flat of Jesus's response? I'm not really Jesus. No shit. Pretty sure we just covered that. Well, he then spent the next, I don't know, but it felt like infinity talking about the grand conspiracy and indoctrination and so on and so forth. If you guys really want to torture yourself, then look at this card and go and watch the full debate. But I will warn you, if we have a look at Steve, this is what Flat Earth Jesus' verbal diarrhea caused him to do. Which is what the moon must be doing. But in heliocentric belief, which is all about the Son of God, says the Sun is also going 510,000 miles per hour through the galaxy. So not only are you going around the Earth at this constant speed. In fact, old grandfather dumbass went on for so long that godless engineer had to step in and tell him to shut up. At this constant speed, constant distance, all the time. But as soon as your car takes off at 100 miles per hour through space, how the hell are you going to remain a constant distance from it without adjusting your speed the whole time? Now, I know you're going to tell me orbital okay, mechanics okay. and all the rest of that. <laughs> Gravity. Gravity is the answer for everything. But um, yeah. you go ahead now. Tell me how the moon works. Yeah, well, yeah. I, okay, I, okay. I was, was going to stop. Bloody hilarious. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, okay. I was going to stop because I did say a Pretty short cool intro, not a five-minute diatribe. I'm going to take you through some of my favorite bits of the debate. We're going to start with Grandfather Dumbass educating us on what the moon is. So, things of physical matter will take the path of least resistance until they find a place where it's arrested and they find buoyancy. And then once the object is at rest, it stays at rest unless you put another force onto it, such as picking it up again or shooting it up or filling it full of helium and sending it up into the stratosphere. And so I think that that's pretty much what our moon is. It is something that is hollow and it's filled full of helium or hydrogen, perhaps, pretty much like anything that you call a satellite. It's the only way it could exist because the satellites would also have to be doing these same speeds and they can't also be down this same well that you're talking about in your bent space time <laughs> ridiculous theory that you pulled out your ass. <laughs> There's no such thing as space time. is an illusion. And yet you for me, make Jesus, them all your wait, theories Jesus, around huge illusions. Jesus, yeah, this is what witches and wizards Jesus, do. They Jesus, make formulas Jesus, out of there. Can you Please repeat that for the people that may not uh, heard that. I, 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 I may have misunderstood you, and I don't want to misunderstand you. Can you please repeat what you said about the moon, Which bit? please? The helium filled with? I uh, mean, full of helium or hydrogen. Yeah, it's, it's some sort of what artificial evidence? construct. Don't worry, I'm going to cover all that was wrong with what he just said. But first, I'm going to play a little bit of it again, and I'd like you to pay attention to Goddess Engineer's face. That's pretty much what our moon is. It is something that is hollow and it's filled full of helium or hydrogen, perhaps. Pretty much like anything that you call a satellite. 
is the only way it could exist because the satellites would also have to be doing these same speeds and they can't also be down this same well that you're talking about. So what he was saying about density and buoyancy is so, so wrong. And I'm pretty sure that everyone would have heard this argument by now. But for those that haven't, let's do this. Take this, my son's football, okay? Now, according to Flat Earthers, if I let this go, the reason it's gonna fall is that the air here is less dense than the ball. Okay, so my question is, well, what about the air here? And the air here? And the air here? You also say that things will follow the path of least resistance to the next level of density. Well, if that's the case, then the air above the ball will actually be ever so slightly less dense than the air below it. So according to your logic, when I let go of the ball, it goes up. Grandfather Dumbass also says that the moon is... <laughs> Grandfather Dumbass says that the moon is full of helium. So buoyancy makes it go up. I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the equation for buoyant force and do a bit of maths. The equation for buoyant force is FB equals PF VFG, where FB is the buoyant force, PF is the density of the displaced fluid, VF is the volume of the displaced fluid, and G is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Using this equation, you can use it to determine the buoyant force of an object. For example, say you submerge an object in water to find the object displaces one liter of water. Water has a density of one kilogram per liter. So now we have everything we need to determine the buoyant force acting on the submerged object because we have the volume and density of the displaced fluid. Consequently, we also have the volume of the object because this is the same volume as that as the displaced fluid. To calculate the buoyant force, simply plug in the numbers. Now our equation reads FB equals one kilogram per liter squared times one liter times 9.8 meters per second squared. Once we do the math, we find the buoyant force equals 9.8 kilograms per meters per second squared, which is the same as 9.8 newtons. If the weight of the object is more than 9.8 newtons, then the object will sink. If it is less than 9.8 newtons, the object will float. But if the weight of the object is exactly 9.8 newtons, then the object will neither sink nor float because it is the same as the buoyant force. The most important part about all of that is that the buoyant force equation has G for gravity in it. You literally can't have buoyancy without gravity. Anyway, do you guys want to see how he thinks the moon was made? That it's made out of say, something that came from Earth, which I suggest the giants mine from what we now call the Grand Canyon. That's where they got the raw minerals to do it. And when you melt stuff into <laughs> making glass and glass baubles, as it cools, you get bubbles coming across it. Now, if we had a moon with all these craters on it, most of these craters face the Earth, which means that they were made from asteroids that only just missed the Earth or meteorites and made an impact on the moon and made these perfect circles. But if it was a bubble or something glass as it pops and cools down fast, that is a far better and logical explanation for why the moon has all these craters in perfect round bubbles, no sideways hits, all round ones. All... Yes, you did hear that right. So the materials for the moon were dug out of the Grand Canyon by giants, melted into glass, filled with helium, and put into the sky to mock us. That is apparently the more logical explanation than it being Earth's natural satellite. Just let that sink in for a sec. And to address his problem about craters on the moon, the fact is that they didn't all have to come in at a direct angle to cause those perfect circles. The velocity and force of the impact is going to cause the meteor to explode and just create a circular crater, like you see in pretty much any atomic test site. So do you think it could get any crazier? Nah, of course not, right? Well, you're wrong. Should we hear what he thinks the sun is? Well, I actually think well, the sun is an interdimensional portal. And it's diluting well, the light from a higher realm oh, into well, our I, physical I realm. Shocking. Steve sums this up pretty well. Sun is a portal. What the fuck wow. are you talking about? And go on, just for a laugh. Hey, Grandfather Damas, what's a pendulum? I understand how pendulums actually... well. They're the tool of the diviners where they summon in demons to make them move. The crazy is strong with this one. So crazy, in fact, that I can only handle it in small doses. I'm going to hand you over to Critical Think, a fellow Aussie to Grandfather Damas and an excellent deployer of Blurf Butthurt. So you can watch him while I scream into this pillow for a second. Why are they so fucking stupid? Hello, 
flatties and globe defenders, it's Critical Thing from Down Under. And thanks to Fight the Flat Earth for having me on his channel. Oh, whoops, uh, sorry mate, I should engage the auto orientation correction filter. Ah, is that better? Yes. Thanks for this opportunity to rip into a fellow Aussie who thinks the Earth is flat. Yes, it's Ross Thatcher, otherwise known as Flat Earth Aussie Jesus. Well, g'day, Ross. Well, g'day. How's it f***ing going? All you f***ing and Aussie f***ing legends. This is Aussie f***ing Jesus here, showing you just how f***ing flat it is here down under. Take a f***ing look over my shoulder, would ya? Can you see any f***ing curvature? I thought not. Check it out. Flat as Okay, Ross, that's mighty Christian of you. Looks like a nice spot. Whereabouts are you, mate? There's Byron Bay. I'm at Tioga Natural Beach Resort. <laughs> uh, National Park, actually, where we are allowed to go clothes optional. Okay, okay, never mind the details. I can see you're enjoying yourself. Uh, let's move right along here. Any final words before we leave you to your skinny dip? Yeah, flat, and that is that. Take it easy. Get that in there. Well, thanks, Ross. See you, mate. Hmm, it appears like Ross thinks the earth is flat because he suffers from a quite common affliction known as looks flat to me. <laughs> Due to a basic misunderstanding of the geometry of the globe earth we live on and maybe combined with too many trips to La La Land, Ross can no longer clearly distinguish reality from the delusion that lives inside his head. In order to dismiss the clarity of everyday global observations, like ships going over the curve, Ross has invented things in his head like obscurity point and height perspective. We won't worry about that today. Let's quickly look at how it all starts with understanding of the lack of side-to-side -side curve. Let's hear from Ross again. Just another quick example of sea level. Standing at the beach, a few feet above. Technically that horizon is supposedly about five or six kilometers away, considering I'm up a couple of feet. Yes, that's right. We don't know exactly in this view, but let's just say the horizon is six kilometers away. That's about right. I do notice, however, that Ross stops the camera looking directly out from the beach, and this indicates he thinks the horizon is six kilometers away in the direction that is perpendicular to the beach. If you don't think about it too much, this could make some sort of sense. But when you think critically about it, that doesn't make any sense at all, and I'll explain more shortly. So all these kilometres, way up for hundreds of kilometres up the beach. Mm, no, here's the problem. That's not hundreds of kilometres. For starters, the visibility is no more than about 30 kilometres on this particular day. I don't know the exact spot where this is taken from, but I can make a good guess based on the view of Cape Byron that it is at New Brighton. That would make Cape Byron about 17 kilometres away, and you can hardly make it out in the haze. There it is there. If he were close to the beach, he would see Hastings Point at a similar distance to the north. Now here's the thing. The Earth is a ball, yes, and wherever you stand on a ball, the surface curves away from you in every direction, not just outwards from the beach. What kind of shape do you think it would be if the curve just followed the coastline? That's just a bit too silly. Nobody is saying the water curves away just from the coastline, yet by saying hundreds of kilometres, Ross is thinking that the six kilometres is parallel to the beach. Now, on a ball, the surface drops away in every direction. And this leads people to think that they should see a drop from left to right when they look 
out on the beach. Now, at first glance, this may seem logical. But let's think about it a bit more. The horizon in this direction is six kilometers. The horizon in this direction is six kilometers away. The horizon in this direction is six kilometers away. It's certainly not hundreds of kilometers in any direction, especially that one towards Cape Byron, which you can just see down there in the distance. That's about 17 kilometers. You can't see much beyond that. So the horizon is actually the same distance in every direction. So when you are this low, you cannot notice that you're on a huge ball. So it's not hundreds of kilometers to the north. It's just six kilometers. So this view is consistent with a globe. Now, to be fair, if the Earth were indeed flat, this is similar to the view you would see. The Earth is so large that you cannot use this horizon view alone to determine if the Earth is flat or a sphere. The differences here are too subtle for the human eye to distinguish between flat and globe. We have to look more carefully for other clues. And one of them is right here in this picture. But first, let's take a look at what Ross has to say about Julian Rocks. Here's a couple of comments that Ross has made about Julian Rocks. It's his go-to for flat earth proof. He says it sits above the horizon when viewed from sea level. And um, the horizon shows not so much as a millimetre of sphericity. That's because he's expecting to see a side-to-side -side curve, which we've shown that that's just not an expectation of the globe. And he says also that it's always visible. He, he makes no bones about that. Even when standing at sea level, always visible above the horizon. And that's why he uses Julian rocks as the best evidence of a stationary... I don't know why he says stationary, but stationary planar Earth. It's in big letters, capital letters, because it's at or above the horizon when viewed from sea level. So here is uh, Julian Rocks. Uh, this particular picture is a little bit above sea level, but you can see what Julian, Julian Rocks looks like. And here's a picture of Julian Rocks from sea level, and you can clearly see that it is not above or on the horizon. And here's another picture. I, I took this picture of uh, Julian Rocks. I took the last two pictures of Julian Rocks that's um, uh, obviously uh, not above the horizon. You can only see the top of the rock. So there you go, Ross. There's your number one flat earth proof gone and let's have a look at your own photo this is a this is a still taken from your video and of course the resolution isn't so great and the visibility is not so good but there's julian rocks in that particular snapshot and um it's not very clear so you can't really tell how much of julian rocks is there but i can tell you it's not the whole of the julian rocks and how do i know this it's because I have a picture of my own taken a little bit further north, which is a very similar uh, mount of Byron Bay showing, although mine is just a little bit higher. But there you can see Julian Rocks, and um, there is not quite on the horizon. And going further away, that's from Norrie's Head, way up to the north, you can see this is 35 metres high. And Julian Rocks is not on the horizon or above it. It's submerged. If I was down at sea level at Norris Head, you wouldn't even see that. There'd be nothing to be seen. I'm 35 metres high. And I know you're going to give me this rubbish about height perspective, but that only exists in your brain. It doesn't exist anywhere in reality. And uh, there's another close-up shot of Julian Rocks from Norrie's Head, a long way away. You can clearly see that the whole of the rocks is not above 
the horizon. So, there you're going to use Julian Rocks as your best evidence. Well, that's just been demolished, hasn't it? Sorry, Ross. So, Ross has gone out to a lookout and he's taken this movie from this lookout and uh, remarks about uh, how flat the earth is. Let's have a listen to this little bit. Why is there so much? Non-existent curvature. So there's non-existent curvature. He's probably basing that on the non-existence of side-to-side -side curvature, which we've already explained. However, you can see here there's Cape Byron, and he's pointed that out in a video. I won't go into that, but I've taken a still shot from the video where you can clearly see the Cape Byron light is shining right on the horizon there so let's have a look to see if there is actually any curvature here or not so ross is claiming no curvature so let's check it out so i've managed to find the place that ross has taken this video from it took a bit of searching but i found it and this is the uh, a little lookout in new south wales and from Google Earth, I've taken the elevation to be 215 metres. So his eye level is 215 metres. Now the lighthouse on Byron Bay, the white light, has a focal height of 118 metres. So if we take a look at this on the photograph, the red line at the bottom is where I've uh, approximated as close as I could get to sea level at the bottom of the lighthouse. It's roughly level with the end of Cape Byron. And the next red line up is the focal height, and you can see that that is right on the horizon. The green line there is uh, 215 metres above sea level. I've calculated that by using the pixels between the two red lines, which is 118 metres. That's what the focal height of the lighthouse is. So I've put that into also into the Bislin's curve calculator, advanced curve calculator. And it's uh, got two images, one what you should see on a flat earth and one what you should see on if there was curvature. Now, clearly, there is curvature. Ross himself has says that the horizon always rises to eye level. Well, your eye level there, Ross, at the lookout is 215 metres, and the horizon is clearly not rising to that eye level. The horizon is actually at 118 metres. It's a very convenient for the lighthouse to be right on the horizon. So there is definitely curvature there, Ross. I don't know why you can't see it. Um, so there you go. And one more thing. Well, uh, Ross kindly uh, um, videoed the sunset, so we'll have a look There's at that. The sun setting over there. Sunsets on another day. Well, the sunset is for today. So he's looking in a westerly direction there, and I can tell that by looking at the aerial view of that lookout. So there's the road. That's uh, This is the westerly direction. He's standing somewhere near that shed there. So the sunset is actually seems to be a little south of west. Now, if this was taken in, it was uploaded in September the 17th, so maybe it was, uh, I don't know, the exact time it was filmed, but um, it could have been sitting around for a while. But the sun was definitely south of west, which if you know anything about a flat earth or a globe earth where the sun should be, on a flat earth the sun should set uh, very much north of west. So thanks, Ross. You've um, helped to demonstrate the globe in three ways. I'll, I'll give you the three again, just in case you may have forgotten. 
there's uh, Julian Rocks is not on the horizon at sea level. The um, there's a horizon drop looking out over Cape Byron, and the sunset is in the west, which is all of those things impossible on your flat Earth. Well, Ross, now that you've seen that there is curvature, what do you think it is that makes water stick to the outside of a spinning globe? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yes, well, are you going to tell me? It is gravity. Gravity pulls everything towards the centre of the mass. Well, it's good to see that Ross has finally come to his senses and thanks to Fight the Flat Earth for allowing me the opportunity to show that Randy isn't the only flat earther who proves the globe. Thank you, Critical Think. The link to the Aussie Flourish Destroyers channel will be in the description. Now, it's time to take a look at the typical paranoia that a flurf displays. Most of them are into multiple conspiracies, 9-11, vaccines, Rothschilds, Illuminati and more. But can you guess what conspiracy Grandfather Dumbass is into? Okay, well this is a different sort of video. It wasn't one I actually intended to make in any way, shape or form whatsoever. This is just looking at the television. And if you look closely, which I recommend you do, you can see this isn't actually real footage at all. This is all somehow CGI rendered whatever crap. Yes, that's right. He thinks the tennis is CGI. I couldn't make this shit up. Should we have a look at his justifications for thinking this crazy shit? And I believe that this is done in such a way, well, not just to get people out of the pubs and going home, of course, but because they're getting us used to watching computer-generated imaging as though it's reality. So you heard it first here. The tennis is CGI so that they can get us used to seeing CGI. I mean, you guys know I don't have to debunk this, right? Seriously? All right, fine, have a look. See all those people in the crowds? Pretty sure if you ask any of them, they saw it live. Debunked. So, ladies and gentlemen, all that is left is for me to say, Flat Earth Jesus, you've been smashed. So guys, this is gonna be my last video for 2018. And I just want to say that I started this YouTube channel just over a month ago and as of recording this video I had 3,565 subscribers and that is blowing my mind. Thank you for watching me. I mean, I don't know why you do, but thanks. A special massive thank you to my patrons. They have decided to support me in my fight against stupidity. In the new year, the patrons are going to get to vote in a lot of the content of my videos and get access to the live streams that I'm going to do. If you would like to be involved, then go to patreon.com forward slash fight the flat earth. Anything you can give, even just one pound or one dollar a month will make a massive difference and I will greatly appreciate it. Or you could grab yourself some cool merch at my store with the link in the description. And for the first month of 2019, I'm going to offer 20% off if you use the code FTFE20 at the checkout. Coming up in the new year is a big change for my channel as I switch my schedule up to four videos a week and a live stream. You guys have been supporting me so much that I want to give you the best content I can and as much of it as I can. I hope you had a great 2018 and I hope your 2019 is even better. If you're not already, please subscribe and get that notification bell on so you know as soon as I've got content out. Don't forget that it's International Ballers Day, so get your NASA gear on, get a photo of yourself and send it to the Twitter account of Red's Rhetoric. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Yeah.